The Magic Power of Belief In the power of belief lies the supreme secret. Belief is the key to basic mind power, which turns concepts into realities. Goals can be attained in ways which seem miraculous, yet we use only natural forces available to everyone. Even physical changes in the body can be caused by deeply implanted belief. The key to having quantities of money often lies in a simple process of auto-suggestion. Concentrate on precisely what you want, and you will see signposts that point the way. The forces of human evolution now have been brought under human control and you can control your own evolution as a better, more successful person. Anything the human mind can believe, the human mind can achieve. Listen to this again, slowly. Anything the human mind can believe, the human mind can achieve. You have seen many of the patterns of success and failure, of happiness and unhappiness, of mind turmoil and peace of mind which man gives to himself. Now when you hear, anything the human mind can believe, the human mind can achieve, you know that the conception of achievement, which turns into the achievement itself, is our great human prerogative. Anything the human mind can believe, the human mind can achieve. That is the supreme secret. Truly, Deeply believe you will have great wealth, and you will have it. Truly, deeply believe you will have sound physical health, and you will have it. Truly, deeply believe you will have a mind at peace, and you will have it, and all the wonders that go with it. Anything the human mind can believe, the human mind can achieve. This is the secret known in bygone times. This is the secret which governs present-day accomplishment. This is the secret which will follow man to the stars. This is the secret of the ages. What do we mean by believe? Wishing won't make it so, runs an old saying. This is true and helps you remember a wish is not a belief. A wish takes place, as it were, upon the surface of the mind. I wish you may say, and follow with any wish that tickles your fancy. To have a million dollars drop into your lap. To be able to flap your arms and fly. A wish is not limited by natural forces. That very apparent fact, however, is not the main difference between a wish and a belief. A belief is created, as it were, in the depths of the mind. A belief becomes part of you. That is why a true, deep belief can change your glandular secretions and the content of your bloodstream and work other physical changes beyond the power of medical science to explain. Again, a belief radiating its unknown wavelength from the depths of your mind to the depths of another mind accounts for a good deal of personality power and much else on which we can put only the clumsiest of labels. It is Belief in a cause, much stronger than a wish to stay alive, which causes people to transcend even the instinct of self-preservation. It is belief that founds religion, sustains nations, stands behind anything great that ever is achieved. A belief, I repeat, is part of you. That is why you can achieve what you believe. Moreover, when you hold a great belief, you believe all the time just as all the time you go on living. As someone expressed it, the conscious mind gives us thoughts we know. You want to put on your shoes, for example, or listen to the radio, and knowing the conscious thought, you take the appropriate action. Now, there is hardly any physical reason why one should not put on his shoes or turn on his radio if he wishes to do so and has the use of his hands. But let us now suppose that there may be some reason not to turn on that radio. Suppose it is the moment at which a certain foreign broadcast may be heard, and your government, an oppressive one, has set up punishments for people who listen to that broadcast. Moreover, you know you cannot listen to that broadcast in complete safety, for you suspect there are spies in your house. Do you or do you not reach out and turn the switch that will bring in the forbidden broadcast? 
that will depend a great deal upon your subconscious mind. It is not in the conscious mind that we are basically fearful or brave, but down deeper. And so the subconscious will instruct the conscious unknown to you, and in the conscious will appear the thought known to you. Don't do it. You'll end in prison. Or, I'm going to assert my freedom to listen to whatever I want to hear, under any circumstances, or even a compromise such as, I'm going to see if that nosy fellow in the furnished room upstairs is at home, and if he isn't, I'll turn on the radio. Take this a step further. Suppose you say in your conscious mind, I am going to turn on that radio at 9 p.m. no matter what. But you wish it rather than believe it, while all the time in your subconscious dwells a fear which amounts to a direction that you will not turn on the radio. Now the subconscious mind will feed all kinds of evasions and excuses to the conscious. You will somehow manage to come home late, or you will rush into the house just in time and accidentally bang into the radio, knock it off the table and smash it. An honest enough accident, since you will consciously believe it was accidental. Or you may make an appointment to do something else at the time of the broadcast, and then suddenly remember, when your subconscious allows you to remember consciously, that this is the broadcast time, and how silly of you to have committed yourself to another obligation. Do not read any implication of dishonesty into all this, nor any implication that no consideration should be stronger than one's right to turn on one's radio. Look at it broadly. See that your subconscious mind is your hidden boss. You probably have recognized this many a time when you have said there is something you simply will not do. It is against your principles. A true principle is a firm belief that is part of you and can, of course, be a very useful and necessary thing. Your subconscious mind is your hidden boss, then, and gives orders to your conscious. But your subconscious is a very special kind of boss. It will go into conference with you, so to speak, and consider changing any of its standing orders, canceling them, substituting others if need be. Decide upon the belief you want, Set it firmly into your subconscious mind. And your subconscious will thereafter instruct your conscious mind to live up to that belief. Let your belief include the concept of achievement and your subconscious mind will discover ways and means toward that achievement, which, on the strength of a mere wish, would completely escape you. You may talk of good fortune and lucky breaks, but what you mean is a sharpening of all your senses toward the achievement you want a focusing of all your forces away from other matters and toward that achievement, a mighty access of strength and resourcefulness, a tuning in upon other minds whose aid otherwise would have escaped you, and more. The best of words limp when they talk of the power of belief. Only feel your belief propelling you toward the goal of your achievement, and you will know at last that an irresistible force is at your command. Is there a limit to what belief can achieve? If there is a limit, nobody has seen that limit yet. I have mentioned often that we may at times avail ourselves of powers beyond our ordinary senses, not supernatural, but natural powers we are only beginning to understand. Deep subconscious belief aids mightily in winning the aid of these unseen powers. Once when I was a child, I had typhoid fever, the only serious illness I ever had had. I was ill for weeks without showing any sign of improvement. As my father informed me years later, I lapsed into a coma. The two doctors who had come out to our farm told my father there was nothing else they could do. My end was only a few hours away. My father walked into the forest. There he knelt down and prayed to another doctor beyond earthly doctors. With his prayer, he generated a mighty all-embracing belief that I would recover. He remained on his knees for an hour or more, and at length a great peace came over him, that peace of mind which is the condition in which the mind works at its mighty best. And suddenly, from nowhere, and yet beyond the slightest shadow of doubt, 
he knew peacefully that I was going to recover. I do not know where my father's prayer might have been heard, nor if it was heard, nor if the mere fact of the prayer gave him the focusing and intensifying agent which is part of deep subconscious belief. But I know that when he returned to the house, he found me sitting up, which had been impossible for me to do a couple of hours before, sitting up, crying for water, and with my fever broken, as we used to say. The conscious mind often serves as a sort of sentinel, which guards the entrance to the subconscious. Thus, as we say, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still because his agreement was merely conscious, perhaps a peacemaker rather than a subconscious change of orders. Or in extraordinary circumstances, we are carried away and do not act in our accustomed manner, but later return to our ordinary way of conducting ourselves because no deep-down impression was made. Hypnotism appears to bypass the conscious mind at some times, and with some people. There is a better and less risky way, however, to reach past the barrier of the conscious and implant instructions in the subconscious, where they will be absorbed and fed back. That way is to give instructions to a sleeping person. The conscious mind sleeps, but the subconscious does not sleep. Recent studies suggest that there are certain stages of sleep in which the mind is more receptive than when it is in other stages. and. I am glad to see this modern investigation of the technique. I may have wasted some of my efforts, but my efforts were so long continued and backed by such belief that they achieved what many others said I never would be able to do. Can the method be extended? My method worked, but it required that some devoted person remain on duty many hours a night. I later experimented with a phonograph which repeated a recorded message every 15 minutes, piping it into a hearing device beneath the sleeping person's pillow. I myself have received great benefit from this device. We know, too, that corresponding devices are sometimes offered for sale. These devices have been benefited by modern developments in sound recording and transmission, but their principle is the same. I have become aware of other recent research into the techniques of sleep learning which suggests some of the difficulties people may encounter. First of all, the machine alone is not enough. First, there must be belief that the subconscious mind can and will receive messages while the conscious is asleep. A skeptical mind may make nothing of the messages. A mind filled with fear and inferiority, or both, will soon decide the gadget is too much trouble to use. Then, too, some people have their sleep so disturbed by the mere existence of a machine at their bedside that their conscious minds never really go out of action. Many people also seem to go to lengths to negate any benefit they may obtain through sleep learning. The subconsciously recorded message needs time in which to take root, so to speak, in the myriad cells of the mind. It will not do this if the conscious mind is allowed, even encouraged, to use its waking hours to throw in negative thoughts, the memory of past failure, for instance, or over-concern with what other people will think of some course of action, or whatever. And finally, I discovered this. The recorded messages must be reinforced when the individual is in a conscious, wide-awake state. He should memorize the recorded messages, which, of course, have no concern with anything but what is to be achieved and carry no clutter of imagined handicaps. He should repeat these completely positive focused messages to himself many times a day so that his conscious mind becomes accustomed to them and, through repetitive conditioning, can talk to his subconscious. Eventually, Sleep learning may be so perfected as to open great new worlds of achievement. It may help you greatly right now, but I wish rather to mention it as an illustration of the way in which the subconscious can and will accept orders which forever after guide you and may even cause marvelous changes within the body. Each of us carries within himself the means of finding his own greatness. Knowing the supreme secret, what the human mind can believe, the human mind can achieve. You see, 
that you have what it takes, your mind, and you have available the only other ingredient you need, a world that is bursting with riches and throbbing with opportunity. Put the two together.